started a little writing this week and oh my god going well or uh, i consider myself a good writer and people usually think i'm a pretty good writer so i thought how hard can this be i'll just start i'll just start writing you know how it works right i mean that's what i'm i'm, I'm basically creating sort of a simple how to uh that also speaks not just to the practice of it, but just sort of kind of why it works is about trust and treating people well and that type of thing. Um, and my words just came out so clunky. Like it just, I don't know. I thought it would, I thought it would be very simple. You know, I just started off with writing about uh, daily standups, which mm -hmm. I think is kind of the glue that holds everything together. And um, yeah, it's gonna, we're going to need some revising too. <laughs> oh. Why do you why do you feel like it's coming out clunky? I don't know. I've decided not to look at that book I'm using as my hero book because it is so short and it would be too easy for me to copy it accidentally. Mm -hmm. Um so uh I just I'm just trying to write it from you know, I'm just trying to explain it from my own perspective, but I just I don't know, it just it just came across very clunky is the only way way to put it. I just uh uh, yeah. So as you say that, I'm thinking when, when we start writing something, we shouldn't judge it too harshly because the first draft is not the last draft. The first draft is notes, ideas, thoughts. It's not supposed to be polished stuff that sounds good. When you say clunky, is it a matter of just expectations at the first draft that you feel like you're expecting it to sound more like the final draft when you're just working on the first draft? I thought it draft, would just sort of just kind of different drip out of my pen. Like it, it, I, I talk about it an awful lot. I just thought it, it would come across more. Um, I, I, I understand what you're saying and I agree and I, I absolutely know that, but I just expected my my first cut to be a little better than it was. Mm -hmm. Um, and I, and it's because it is basically, I mean, it's instructions, right? Mm -hmm. So, so I guess that's pretty much what's making it clunky. It's not me. I'm also trying to be concise. I want this to be a short little book that people can look at. They can take it, they can hand it out. They can figure it out in a short period of time. And that's kind of how I would like to position it is this is for people who, you know, you want, you need to learn this today. You need the least you need to know. You don't want to read like a thousand pages for something that's really doesn't need to be that complex. Mm -hmm. um, just sort of the least you need to know. Um, and yeah, I'm gonna, I, it's just gonna, it was just, I thought it would be easier, I guess. Mm -hmm. You've heard that quote attributed to Abraham Lincoln uh, saying, I would have written you a shorter letter, but I didn't have the time. I have not, That that's me in a nutshell. <laughs> The thing is, writing something concise actually takes a lot more work. In order yeah. to write something concise, we have to write something long, and then we have to go back and we have to revise and refine and edit and cut. And then we get down to something that's very concise and punchy and clear. Yeah. And we make that mistake often of thinking, oh, I just want to write something short and simple, and this is going to be easy because it's short and simple. But that's actually the stuff that takes more work. I'm actually more long-winded than most people as well. Like I, I can tell you about something that would took five five minutes and I would be writing for like pages and pages and then it would remind me of something else that was related. And so that's definitely going to be part of the challenge. Yeah. I just wonder if you back up a little bit and give yourself some space and say, I'm not going to try to make it concise. I'm not going to try to make it polished or really good. I'm going to just get all my ideas out in a big, again, vomit draft is what we call it. I'm right. just going to get all the thoughts out there and then I'll go back and I'll make it sound good and make it concise. I like that idea. Thank you. I think it might that is that is something that, that I'm it's kind of making it hard is it's like this is already already too long to just go ahead and let it be long and then cut from there. That's a good idea. Thank you. It, it just sounds like you're being a little bit too judgmental on yourself, seen as how you're at the very beginning of this process, not the end. Right. At the end, that's the time to be judgmental and nitpicky. But at the beginning, we're just trying to get the the thoughts out. Mm hmm. Yeah, that is a good idea. And actually, probably I would end up 
finding additional material I could pull out of there and make it something else, you know, a little article or whatever. Right. Yeah. I mean, it never goes to waste. Even if you get that first draft out and you end up cutting 90% of it, that other 90%, yeah, it can become blog posts. It can become other books. It can become other things. Josh, I don't want to be, I don't want to be nosy, but um, are you okay? You look like you've been oh, hurt. Yeah. 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 Speaking of nosy in my nose, um, it might look bad, but the other guy looks worse. So um, now I had a tiny little uh, basal cell carcinoma removed. Okay. And uh, it's funny how a tiny little thing ends up with like a big scar. So I just had surgery on Tuesday and I took the bandages off yesterday and putting Aquaphor and all that stuff on it. So yeah, it's kind of ugly and I'm a little swollen and starting to get a black eye on one side, but I'm good. I didn't get in a fight or a car accident or anything. Just one of those uh, things that you have to do when you get to my age. Well, I'm glad you got it getting healthier. Yeah. So yeah, this time I went in early. I had a cancer scare a couple of years ago where I waited about three years after I had symptoms to go in and actually get it taken care of. And this oh. time I was like, no, I'm going to nip this in the bud before it gets to that stage. So glad you did. Yeah, me too. Yeah. I think my modeling career is over, but it's all good. Yeah. For a moment, it looked like that was a large bottle of champagne. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, it's it's too early for that, and I'm not a drinker anyway, so that's okay. <laughs> yeah. Welcome, Jackie. Welcome, Jeff. Glad to have you here. Hi, everyone. Good to be here. This is my first time coming to the master class, even though I've been kind of following along with stuff for a little while, but but glad to be here. Yeah. Well, welcome. Why don't you introduce yourself to us, Jeff? Nicole and uh, Jackie have been here several times, but since it's your first time, give us a little background about yourself. Yeah, so brief background, um, I have an engineering and technology background, but a few years uh, leveraged that um, because I, what I realized that I really love to do is work on work with people. Um, and so I leverage um, kind of in my genius zone of uh, people and mindset uh, development, uh, but for engineers and technology professionals uh, coming from that world. And so I've run a coaching business for the last um, four years or so uh doing that and i just committed to myself about two weeks ago that i was gonna uh finally write a book and so um been diving into the 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 workbook the last couple of weeks and um going through that process i uh in uh you know and and the goal right now is to try and do that in in 90 days because i have a speaking engagement at the end of october uh, early november that i would and uh, also get a um get an exhibit booth uh, for the conference that I'm going to. And so I'd love to have some books on the table there uh, for when I'm going. So that's, that's aggressive, but um, right. yeah. It's possible though. So you're looking yeah. to get it all done. I mean, written, edited, published, and in your hands in 90 days. Wouldn't that be nice? Yeah. So <laughs> I've been, I've been writing um, blogs and newsletters and articles for myself and for other um other places for the last few years and so i've got all sorts of stuff to draw from it's just a matter of putting it together in book form um so uh, i'm in the i'm in that process right now of really you know vomiting all the 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 kind of fat outline stuff and and figuring out what do i want this to really look like and then i know that filling that in is actually going to go reasonably quick and then got to decide how deep of an editor experience i want to have and all that stuff, um, or do I just want someone who's going to help me make it easy to read? Um, cool. You know, um, so anyway, got to, stay, got some of those decisions in, to make. Let's stay in touch on that because it's a tight timeline, but I'd love to yeah. help you get that done one way or another. Like, let's get that done. Let's get it out there. And I have friends who have written books in even shorter time spans than that. It's a ton mm -hmm. of work. It's hard, but it's definitely doable. Yeah. Your wife so, wrote a book very quickly like that, didn't she? Yeah, my wife did a book in about two months. Uh, I have a friend who did a book in two weeks. Uh, so it's it's doable. It's But you have to throw some things to the side, like caring about your book being perfect. It's not going to be perfect if you're doing it quickly. 
but yeah. it can still be good enough. I mean, well, I is, friends, does a book ever get perfect? No, that's that's yeah. the dirty <laughs> little truth is it's never perfect enough. You yeah. can work on it for five years. It's still not perfect. Yeah. So, you know, I mean, it, it the, sounds like that. It. it does sound like that would be doable, although aggressive. I agree with Josh, but I, just as a back as a backstop, you could do just a high level brochure teaser, not brochure, but a high level booklet pamphlet if you couldn't as a backstop. Right. Yeah. And, and if nothing else, even if the, the physical thing uh, isn't quite there by that point, you know, I can have it kind of in process and trying to do pre-orders or something while I'm there. Or something yeah, like there you that. go. So, hey, How I've many pages? It, but, yeah. Yeah. So that's, well, that's the, that's the question. I'm trying to say, do I want it to be a little bit of a, a short, like 20,000 word book to be a little bit easier and just say, I'm going to really, you know, quick hit this stuff. Because uh, my audience is engineers who aren't really voracious breeders and don't want a full slog of a thing to to work through. They kind of want the the meat, and so maybe I just deliver, you know, the the, the short, short and sweeter, yeah, version. Give them the meat. You know, they can instead bring of a fifty, bread. sixty thousand word book or something like that. So anyway, yeah. If you re if you reverse system. engineer this, getting it printed and getting physical copies, I would plan on the better part of a month for that. So there's yeah. 30 of your 90 days. Yeah, totally. Editing. Uh, my wife's editing. My wife's an editor and she's editing a guy's business book right now. And it's ending up to be about a month in his time. Uh, and so again, there's kind of another month, which basically gives you one month to actually write your book. If you write your book, you get it to an editor, you're going to be rewriting as it's edited to. Right. Uh, and then you're working on cover design while you're doing the editing and everything mm -hmm. so that by the two yeah. month mark, you've got it ready to go and go to print. And then you're going to wait about a month to actually get those physical copies. Mm -hmm. That's if you go through, you want to get better pricing. I mean, you can stick it up on Amazon and order physical copies immediately, pretty much. But if you want to go get a little bit nicer print job, if you want to get hardcover or something, then you're going to go through an Ingram Spark. And in that case, um, even a month might not be enough. So you'd want to be early to that. So anyway. Can you do both or, or is it mutually exclusive? No, you can do both. So for example, my LinkedIn book is on Amazon. The hardcover mm -hmm. comes from Ingram. The paperback is through Amazon KDP. Kindle, of course, is right. directly through Amazon. And then I did the audio book, which is through Audible, which is owned by Amazon, but it's right. run like a separate company. And so I'm dealing with three companies to get four formats on the Amazon webpage. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. Okay. But you just use the Ingram through for the hardcover. Just for the hardcover, because it's, I mean, you can do the paperback through Ingram too and have them stock Amazon with it, but right. there's no point because Amazon does it a yeah. pretty good job. And then you just send copies to FBA essentially mm -hmm. the, well you don't with ingram they or, just automatically do it you don't add, okay you so it's still anything. kind of fulfillment on demand essentially yeah yeah so it's still print on demand through ingram and they just connect with amazon and you don't have to worry about it at all sweet so i never have to deal with like oh, i saw it when i was amazon yeah i saw when i was setting up just a KB, kdp account that Amazon's looking to create hardcovers at least soon. They've got like a beta thing coming on or something. Uh, so they already do hardcovers, but it's the uh, it's the kind where it's printed, like the graphics are printed on the hardcover itself. It's not a dust jacket. Oh, okay. And so that works for some types of books, but that's more like the books my kids are reading, like uh, Captain yeah. Underpants or, uh, mm -hmm. you know, it's like it kind of comes across as like a, children's book a little bit that way whereas if you're doing a business book you really want the dust jacket it just looks more professional and that you can only get through ingram right now i'm assuming at some point amazon will add dust jackets and get into that business but they just haven't done it yet the day they do it it'll be nice because then you'll only have to deal with one company to do everything yeah but dealing with ingram is not that bad once you set it up i mean i haven't touched my account in a year and a half and yes. my books are still being delivered to Amazon. Yeah. And that's also something that I could say, I'll do the hardcover piece later, you know. If, right. You know, yeah. for the for the timeline piece. And and Audible will be later too, you know. So it's not like at all, all that needs to be done. Right. It doesn't need, yeah. 
I mean, to do this conference, if you just want a bunch of paperbacks, then yeah, just go through Amazon and get it done all there. Yeah. Cool. You might pay a little bit more through Amazon. Uh, I don't know off the top of my head. Uh, I know that if you go through Ingram, you get some pretty steep bulk discounts if you order a lot. Mm -hmm. But uh, the price breaks with Ingram come at like 600 books and then again at like 900 books. So in 900 books is a lot. I mean, that's like a pallet about three feet high. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's so, a lot. Yeah. So I've got one of those pallets sitting in my garage and uh, it takes a while to get rid of all those. Yeah, that would be a bit. But if you're speaking a lot at conferences and you can get rid of, rid of 50, 60 books every time you go speak or something, then maybe it makes sense. Yeah. Yeah, I don't think we're going to buy in bulk for that. Yeah. Uh, quite yet. Yeah. So, but yeah, let's stay in touch and just let me know any questions you have. Let me know so I can help you move this along fast so you're not spinning your wheels trying to get something done and wasting time because yeah. you don't have time to waste. Yeah. So, I mean, thoughts from you where you've had a similar experience with at least some of your books where you you wrote just a ton and then you were you kind of compiled that like your LinkedIn book, right? You know, mm -hmm. you you already had like a LinkedIn course. Right. And so kind of repurposed that a little bit. But um, so how did you go from, hey, I've got a, a course or a bunch of articles that I've written and then constrain that into, into book form? You know, it's just a different, you got to still have a through line uh, for the book experience. Um, thoughts on that organization you know the outlining experience around got all this stuff compressing that yeah in in the case of the linkedin book it kind of wrote itself because i mm -hmm. had i had come up with the 60 linkedin tips right and was posting those on linkedin as individual linkedin posts and then i just thought hey i could squeeze these all into a book and call it 60 linkedin tips or something and so when the final format of the book came out, it wasn't all that different than just squishing together those 60 tips. I went back and I refined it. I added homework assignments to each one of the tips and mm -hmm. I got rid of some and added others in. So, I mean, I edited it a lot, but the final book was more or less just sticking all those tips together because I let the, I let the content that I already had determine what the format of the book would be. Mm -hmm. Um, so I, maybe I could have done more work and changed the format somehow, but that's kind of where I was, was I said, if I'm going to do this, I'm not going to rewrite this. I don't have the time. I don't have the motivation, but if I can just stick this all together and get a good book out of it, then sure. I'll go ahead and do that. So mm -hmm. I let the content dictate the format of the book in that case. Mm -hmm. yeah. Do you have a lot of blog posts or articles or content out there already? Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. A bunch of it. So if, if you're looking at that and trying to determine, I mean, it would have been better for me to go back and think about my audience a little bit more and say, what is best for my audience? Because I really did it from a selfish perspective. I said, what's best for me to get this book out. And I was thinking of it from the standpoint of any book is better than no book. And so I'm going to do what's easiest for me and I wasn't really thinking a lot about my audience and what's best for them. If I were in your shoes, I would look at that a, a little bit more than I did and say, what's best for my audience? How would they prefer to consume this content or get this learning or this knowledge? And what format is going to help them the most? Now, if that lines up with what you've already got and you say, well, doing it this way is actually best and I can do that easily because I've already got this content, great. If you look at the best way for your audience and you say, I'm going to have to do a lot of work on my content to redo it. And yeah, I can use pieces here, but I'm going to have to do a lot of work. Then it's a question of, do you want to do that work or do you want to make it easier on yourself? And that's good enough. Mm -hmm. and that's a question only you can answer. Yeah, sure. And, and the other wrestle there on the, you know, the right thing for the audience um, as I'm trying to wrestle the outline structure. Um, and everything is, is I would love as far as the positioning side of things, um, right? My current programs are mostly focused for individuals. 
right? Um, but that's kind of tapped me out to a point where I can only fulfill so so much of that um, from a from a business or my practice standpoint. Um, I would love for the book to be applicable and usable from a positioning standpoint for work with individuals still and for work in organizations that I could you know take it to. But those are two different audiences with different problems that do have plenty of overlap as far as people developing their career. The, the kind of working title for the for the book is the intentional engineer mm-hmm. um, that, you know, trying to help people design what they want their uh, career and life piece to, to look like. Um, a lot of the work there. And, uh, and so, yeah. Um, so, so the tension of these two potential kind of audiences um, and maybe that means two books eventually, but. Um, yeah, I mean, I could think about this more and maybe come up with a different answer, but my gut feel is if you want to do that, that's two books. I would focus right. on one audience and I'd pro- probably focus on the individual because individuals buy books at the beginning. Uh, even if it's an organization, it's an individual buying the book, still making that decision. Mm. And so if you target the individual and they love the book, they'll buy that book for their organization. And if you come out with an organizational focused book later, then the individuals who loved the individual book will buy that. But if you target organizations, uh, it's a little bit of a harder sell to get an individual to buy a book that's written for an organization. Right. Yeah. So I would, and and it's just, it's too hard to mix the two, I would say. Right. I mean, if you look at a Stephen Covey's Seven, ha- Seven Habits type of book, you can definitely use that book for individuals as well as organizations. Yeah. But it is more of an individual focused type of book. And then he went on and he wrote Seven Habits for Families and there's Seven Habits for Teens. And I don't know how many Seven Habits books there are, but there are a lot. Uh, it's the same with uh, Hal Elrod mm-hmm. and his um, Miracle Morning. Mm-hmm. He's, I mean, there are, 20 of those books or something. He started out with a miracle morning, just general, but now there's like miracle morning for real estate agents and all sorts of stuff. Oh gosh. I didn't know he'd done that many. Yeah. Yeah. So there, well, what he does is he's smart. He partners with other people. So somebody else writes the book for a certain niche and then it's hell out Hal Elrod with so-and-so and and he ends up with a bunch of books and people helping him market in the books, but he doesn't have to actually write all 20 books. So great. great model for him. Mm -hmm. But uh, yeah, I would focus on the individual and get the individual hooked. And then later on, you can do an organizational focused book if you want to. It's going to make your life a lot easier than trying to figure out how do I do this for individuals and organizations in the same book? Yeah, I I, I think it would be the individuals inside of the organization. So, you know, tips for if you're trying to move across organizations or if you're trying to stay and grow where you're at, then that's totally cool, but it's just a different way to, to manage that. But yeah, still focused on the individual, not, um, you know, either way, but just in different contexts or, you know, problems that they're trying to solve, mm-hmm. at least sort of, but related. And so trying to be a little more principle centered to a degree. Um, mm-hmm but trying to figure out, okay, what specific tactics? Because if I go into, hey, the individual who is trying to move, say, hey, I feel stuck in my job, I got to move companies. That's a different thing, you know, than someone who's saying, I'm trying to grow where I'm at. Yeah, yeah. This is Onyx, by the way. She likes to come in and scratch at the door and snuggle my feet during these calls. So nice. Oh. <laughs> But she's cute, so we let her get away with it. She gets away with a lot. Onyx. There's her big gun. All right, down you go. Well, great. Well, any other questions, Jeff? Or as you're getting started? Well, yeah. So I'll I'll need to be thinking about editing very soon. Um so yeah, just kind of filtering through the type of editing that I want, right? Because um, I'm the kind of person as a writer that I 
can can crank a bunch of stuff out, but I don't like proofreading and reading it over again. Yeah. Uh, um, and so a lot of times when I write a, a blog or something, I just write and post. I don't even read it through again for better or worse. It's just. What I, I do. do the same thing a lot. Yeah. Um, and so I know I need some help to, you know, there's, there's going to be grammar and, and sentence structure stuff. So I know I need some help there. But do I need to do the like deeper developmental edit work or again, kind of the a little more surface level, I've got the structure and I've got the vision. I just need someone to make it really readable and, and do that stuff. So thoughts on kind of the styles of editors and, and where to find a, a good one. Sure. Uh, so generally, I mean, you can write a book without an editor and sure. you can make it good enough. I highly recommend hiring an editor or getting a professional editor to work on it. Uh, of a lot of authors don't need a developmental editor because they've got that sorted out in their head. They've got mm -hmm. the basic structure. They know what the premise is. And so they don't need that kind of help. A lot of people do. Um, so, but I'd say that's the type of thing where maybe you need a developmental editor, maybe you don't. The proofreading and sentence structure and line editor, they're all these different names. They're like eight different types of editing. But the type of editing that looks at, does this paragraph make sense? Does this sentence make sense? Could we word this in a way that's better? And of course, is the grammar correct? Is the spelling correct? All that technical stuff. That's the stuff I would say everybody definitely needs that. And anybody who publishes a book without that is going to regret it. Because none of us is very good at that stuff unless we're a professional editor. And even if we're, even if you were an editor writing your own book, it's still different when you bring in another person with a different set of eyes, because you've gone over that language so many times, you know, the jargon, you know, the terms, but an editor brings that fresh set of eyes to look at this and say, this doesn't make sense to me. Maybe it makes sense to you as the writer, because you've thought about it so much, but nobody else has that same context. And so you've got to word this in a different way so that it makes sense to your audience and not just to you. And so I think that's really critical to get that type of editor involved. Yeah. And, and is that just so, after first draft, essentially? Uh, I would say more towards the final stages. Like you feel like I'm just about done with this book. Maybe I'm going to make some changes, but it's, it's pretty much there. 95% mm -hmm. done. That's when I would bring in the other editor and say, all right, I want you to start going through this. I might make a few changes here and there, but it's basically done. Mm -hmm. That's when you bring in the proofreader, line editor, copy editor, who really gets technical yeah. with stuff. And Otherwise, that you're changing too many things. Yeah. Does that collaboration basically just take place in Google Docs for the most part? Uh, that's the or way I like to do like it. It. Mm -hmm. it depends on the editor and it depends on you. Some people like writing in Word. Uh, some people like editing in Word. There are all sorts of different ways that editors prefer to work, but I prefer to work in Google Docs. Um, and so it's just up to you and the editor to decide what the best format is for you. Okay, cool. Cool. And then the, the other thing, you know, just thinking ahead to the actually putting in the, and maybe some of the KDP stuff takes care of this, the typesetting of, you know, putting it into book form because you just got a big old document with the book text and images and right. whatnot. But then typesetting that, what does that process look like and entail? That's another process where it's certainly easier to pay somebody else to do it if you've got the money to pay somebody else to do it. If you're going to do it yourself, there are a number of software programs where you can do that. You can actually just, I mean, you could do it in Microsoft Word and then KDP has like templates and stuff that will help you get it in there. So you can do it that way. Uh, there are other programs. Uh, Vellum is one that's, I don't know if it's on PC yet. It started out as a Mac only program. Uh, Readsy, which is sp spelled R-E-E-D-S-Y, readsy.com. They have a typesetting program that's free on their website that you can plug text into. So there are a lot of programs out there that will help you do the typesetting and formatting. Uh, I prefer to, 
have a professional do that. And rather than trusting the program to do it, I prefer yeah. to have a human with a program doing it. And I find it just produces a little bit yeah. more refined result. And they know all about margins and spacing, line spacing and everything to get it just right. And mm -hmm. so I prefer to have somebody else do that. Do you find but, someone on Reedsy to, to do that? Like, you can find somebody on Reedsy. Uh, also, again, my wife does this. If you want to talk to her, I'll give you, in fact, I'll just plug it in here in the chat. If you want to talk to her, reach out. But yeah, Reedsy has, um, Reedsy has like lists and guides and places to find editors. So that's a good resource. Also, Upwork.com is a good place to find people. You might have to test people out a little bit more on Upwork to see if you found somebody good. Whereas on Reedsy, they've already screened people a little bit more and they really know yeah. book editing. Mm -hmm. So um, Reedsy would be probably trusted a little bit more, but it also might be a little bit more expensive. Yeah. And that cost, you know, ballpark, obviously there's always a range to this stuff. Is that like a few hundred bucks on the typesetting? Um, or is that... Um, yeah, it does really depend on the length of your book and if you have a lot of images and stuff. If your book's just text and headings and chapters, then that's pretty simple. And you might be looking at anywhere from a couple hundred bucks to maybe a thousand dollars. Editing, to edit a 50,000 word manuscript, you might be looking at anywhere between 1500 to $3,000 to get that edited. And that's like, that's pretty extensive editing. I mean, that's taking your manuscript and taking it from there to getting it fully ready to print. Yeah. And it's not just, uh, somebody who does this work, they may not just do the editing, like they might do help you out with typesetting, but they also might be looking at, hey, to get this ready to print, you need to have this entry page, this intro page at the beginning, you need to have your title page, you need to have your copyright page. So there's a lot of other, Mm -hmm. miscellaneous stuff that they can help you set up and get right to get that book ready for printing beyond just editing or uh, making it look good. Yeah, I'd really recommend to editor Jeff. It's been super valuable for me. My book's not on, I wish mine could be ready by October. We'll see. Um, but they, what's really been amazing for me is the editor I have has helped my information find a voice that could be received by the public. And so it's it's been like a bridge. She's in a very opposite world than me. And so when she hears what I'm saying, which is sort of in my language, then she's able to translate. So it's consumable and it's really exciting to read when she edits. And I'm using an editor as I go along. Yours is a little different. And if I were you, I would talk to Josh's wife. I mean, I, if I had known... Uh, Josh, before I signed up for the person I did, I would have definitely gone straight here. I think he's got incredible insight and value. I love his seven point program. It's really helped an overlay to what I'm doing. Um, I'm actually working on three books, but yeah, I can't stress how valuable an editor is because you get your information can get very uh, nuanced to your own language and especially the space I'm in with um, travel tourism and its sustainability. It's been really hard to translate it. So it's super valuable. I'd recommend I start with his wife and then move from there, but I would do it sooner than later because it, it helps kind of get it. I mean, unless you're already know that what you're going to say is going to be easy to digest from your audience, because Josh is right. You need to write the book for that audience, not just for yourself, so that it's of value to them and they want to consume it. Mm -hmm. Cool. Thanks, Jackie. Jack, I don't want what's, to, your wife's, what's your wife's first name? Uh, Bryn, B-R-Y-N-N. I don't want to pitch her too hard in this forum, but uh, yeah. one other benefit you get is if you hire her, you get me behind the scenes because she's always pulling me into stuff and saying like, hey, what do you think of this here? And what do you think this author should do? So you get you get my consulting for free if you hire her. Nice. Cool. Cool. Anything else, Jeff? Anything else that's you're hung up on or have questions about? I just want to make sure we've really got you off to a running start here. You know, right now, I, I think it's, 
Yeah, I'm in that space of the outlines, the, the critical piece, the fat outline, and uh, really building that out in the right structure. And I've got kind of a first cut of the outline, and then it's, and then we'll we'll start, you know, sprinting to to put it all together. Um, but for now, I think that's that's what I gotta do. Um, all right. Yeah. Cool. Well, great. Um, I'll be excited to see the progress on this. Yeah, thanks. Appreciate it. All right, Jackie, I think it's your turn. I'm good. Jeff's motivated me to put more pedal, more metal on the pedal. I mean, I have a talk in October, a TEDx talk, and I would love to have one of these books done. And um, so, yeah, I, I'm excited, motivated, and I just can't find the copy I wanted to work on today. <laughs> so there's always another takeaway here. Be very organized. I mean, I I started on Google Docs and then she wanted to move to Dropbox, but Dropbox didn't work for me. Google Docs is, I think, way better. So we're back on Google Docs. So some things didn't, you know, get on the van to move, I guess. I really like Google Docs as well. But speaking to that organization, my wife was looking for the latest the last copy, the final copy of my LinkedIn book the other day. And she's like, we've got to do better at organizing your book manuscripts because I went in there and it was like, oh, here's the file that says final copy. But wait, there's final copy number two. Yeah. And number three. That's and number what, four. Yes. And she, she found final copy number eight. And so then she's like, well, how do I know there's not a final copy number nine or 10? Oh, God. Yeah. So a final like becomes the wrong word. It's V. It's V1, V2, V3, V4. Final, final is the final. Yeah. Never name a copy final copy until it's actually the copy that you use to print the book. <laughs> that is a very important lesson. Yeah. Because otherwise you do spend time. I'm I'm working with a client on another book that he's having, he's working with a ghostwriter on and they're already having organization issues. And we've only been working on the book for two weeks and they're writing the introduction. And we already had an issue the other day on a call where he's like, hey, wait a second, you've got a copy up on your screen, but that's not what you just sent to me yesterday. Oh, and God. we spent 20 minutes going back and forth trying to uh, figure out like, who has the most recent version of this and where's, you know, and he's like, all right, I'm just going to scrap all my feedback and you send me your copy and I'll redo my feedback. It's like, oh, we're just starting on this guys. We do have to be more organized about this. V1, V2, V3. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Organization can save a lot of time. Yeah. Like right now, I mean, I can't find it. So. Yeah. Well, great. Well, we've got a small group today, so we have time for more questions or, and uh, nobody has to feel like they're monopolizing the time because we've got plenty of time. Or we can go into our working session together. Uh, so Jeff, one of the things we do on these calls is the first hour, we just do this Q&A stuff. And then the second hour, for those who want to stick around, we'll just work on our books. We all go on mute and we're just working on our books. And it's just a way to get a little bit of accountability and make sure that every week we get at least an hour done on our book project. And if somebody has a question during that time, they can go off mute and just say, hey, I just thought of something. What about this? And we can talk about it. So we can do that now. Or if people have more questions right now, then we can answer more questions. Well, I was just thinking one thing, maybe not in this call, but maybe in another one that could be valuable and maybe... Um, is your seven questions about why you're writing a book. It kind of keeps your North Star fresh and mm -hmm. it may morph a little bit. So I just wondered if that was something maybe in another call. Maybe not today. Well, I we thought could those go, were good. We could go through it right now if you want. They're hard. All right. I shouldn't have opened it, but it may be helpful for Jeff because he's just starting. Or Jeff, did you already answer those? I probably did in the workbook, but I need to go back and see what I said. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's funny, that workbook, I've worked on that for so long and I've put so much into it that sometimes I'm going back through and editing it and I'm like, I don't even remember writing this. Like, <laughs> oh, God. 
I can see how that happens. Yeah, sometimes I've been feeling that with these songs that are coming through. They're just being channeled, and I, you know, I feel like a channel for this. I'm just getting so many downloads. I can't keep it organized. So, yeah, cool. Well, if there aren't more questions, then let's go into our working session right now, and we can just go into that. Unless you want me to go through the seven questions right now, Jackie. I do kind of, but I'm, I don't know if I have crisp answers ready because I was really where, where are they in the workbook? Remind me. Right in the beginning. Okay. Very beginning. I have to All right, go through them. Yes. Let's see if I can. It'll be good. Just for memory. For, uh, not a memory, for a. Uh... A guidepost. I have to find them too. Which questions exactly are you referring to? Okay, let me show you. I'll find them. Oh God, now we all have to find them. Wait, I have, I was just, cause I was looking for this, this chapter that I'm trying to find and I came across your stuff cause I've been filing it in my book chapter stuff. And then I thought, oh. Or what's one of the questions, just so I can search. Well, right why now. are you, why are you writing this book? What is you, what, why are you writing this? Who is it for? What, it, what do there's you There's seven, there's seven things in your fast start checklist. Well, there's more, there's 13 actually, but the why is in there. I remember seven. Okay. Now I have to find it too. Well, we could tee it up for next time. Or there's the hook points that's seven. Your ideal audience has a problem they think about every day until they hear you say, which makes them believe you can help them. So you help them, which makes them want more. That's yeah, that wasn't it. It was more personal around. Now, I, it's so funny. I just thought maybe it was when I was going through emails because I'm trying to find this chapter. And I thought, oh, I have a lot of Josh's stuff in here. Let me go back. And oh, maybe it's in the book thing. Well, and of course, there's the seven systems, but. You're no, it wasn't that. that, right? It was no, it was these first questions like when it's chapter one of your book. Why are you doing this? It's important to know why you're writing your book. So I felt it was kind of pushes you to think about the North Star of where what motivated you to step up to this project. And I thought it was a good alignment. I did write the answers down somewhere and I was struggling with some of them. And then I, uh, if I didn't have it, let me see if I can find it, Josh. Well, I can, we'll do it for next time. I don't want to take, it doesn't have to be now, but I, I will find it. It's funny, I, you, you know, when you're looking for something, you find all these other things. Then when you go to look for what, you found you didn't weren't paying attention because you just kept coming across it and then you think wait where was that yeah i have it in here it's got to be josh's book there we go here we go Okay, welcome. There's no perfect book. Way to write. One more thing. Privacy, credit, expectations. You want some million copies. Do it well. Do you have any questions? My commitment. Why? Here it is. Introduction. Why you're here. Okay, maybe. The... No, this isn't it. Wait, let's see. Where is it? No, it's not here. Let me see. It's not this one. God, Josh, you're right. Your stuff is hard to find. As I'm looking through this, of course, I'm noticing like, ooh, I need to change that thing here. I need to Oh edit this my God, thing. don't so do like, it. Don't do it. I'm finding like little tiny things where I'm like, oh, there's another thing that I could make a little bit better here. The 80-20, the Burke show, the pride. God, it keeps having an air. It keeps reloading it. Arr. <laughs> You're suggesting. 
because you ask people to also weigh in on this. Mm -hmm. Here it is, the seven systems influence. Wow, I can't even load it. It just keeps reloading itself. I can't. It wasn't this far down. It must have been something else you sent. It's not in your book. It's not in your published Arthur book. Wow, okay. now I'm I'm definitely on a treasure hunt. I've got to find it because I felt they were really good. Maybe it was in one of your marketing pieces. Maybe it was. Introduction. Why are you here? Wow, this is so messed up. I can't load it. I can't load your book. Maybe because I don't know why. Well, never mind. Didn't mean to distract us. All right. We'll just start working on the chapters we can find. Jeff doesn't have much time, man. His click, his clock is ticking. <laughs> have to, go, Jeff, go. No, I'm gonna <laughs> yeah. I'm gonna put a mark that I get I get my draft ready by where are we? Okay, so September 15th. So my talk is the middle of October. But this book actually doesn't relate to my talk as much. So that's good. This is more the travel book. The, it's the other book, Seeing Yourself in Nature. So maybe that that's an easier book. It's a very small book. It really just needs an illustrator. And I just pulled it back from illustrator because I didn't think she was the right one. So I'm going to try to illustrate it myself. Does your wife do illustration? <laughs> no, I'm afraid not. Sorry. <laughs> But I can connect you with other illustrators. If you want to talk about that, let me know. I'd be happy to find some people. Jeff, good to have you. I see you got to run. Yeah, thanks so much. Uh, glad to be here. Um, I'm going to be missing next week, but I'm going to try and attend as, as much as I can in the future next little bit. So Sounds thanks great. so much. Happy Thank to you have you. Jeff. Have a good one. Bye. Um, so, Jackie, so um so tell me again which book is more relevant to your ted talk it's the it's either the children's book the nature in me or the eight worlds of wonder because my my ted talk is called rewild yourself and it's going to be i've already just done my first video it's under nine minutes i'm waiting for my coach to give me a, okay i've already cleared the first draft it's up in woodenville for uh washington state uh, it's the, the placeholder date is October 14th. We don't know for sure. So it's really about seeing yourself in nature as nature. So the book, um, called the eight worlds of wonder is really a book I'm building for travelers that I would like to be in every hotel room on the planet. I mean, that's the bigger vision. It's very small book fits in your pocket. And the idea is <clears throat> to, um, I'm trying to think where I put it. It's the little book to get you to think about these eight worlds, wherever you go, <clears throat> there's sky, water, land. And so I break it poetically and I need an illustrator to just do the, the feeling of sky, like what lives up in the sky. It's a, it's sort of children for all ages, but it's to get you to think more about this, getting a sense of place where you travel. And then you take that home and you think about the sky where you live and the world of that sky and the world that's in the water and how do the water systems connect like that. It's more to inspire wonder as you wander through the earth. So it's a very uh, short, small book. It's it's very doable to be done. It is very doable. I'm stuck right now on the illustration. Okay. The other book, The Nature in Me, is one of the songs that came through me. It's a sing-along song about again, seeing yourself in nature. This also fits the talk because I'm in, I'm asking people about, we think about rewilding, we think about putting wolves back in Yellowstone, but what if we rewild ourselves and, and put ourselves back in balance with nature's system and think with nature, like regenerative agriculture, things that biomimicking, things that are actually sustainable, fit the environment because they are the environment. So it's like that. So the Nature and Me song is... Um, I want it to be a book. I, I need somebody to help me with this one too, that it's really a song. I have it all built out like a song and I want you to be able to push and hear the song and sing along with it. But I want the book itself to tell the story of the song. It's like the air I breathe, like the wind I blow, like the water I nourish, like the vision, like the river I flow. 
<laughs> you know, I burn like a fire when I'm out of control and spin like the earth when I rock and roll because power in nature is a power in me. It's like that. Mm -hmm. And so it has a verse, but all the pieces could be animated like the river I flow. So you start seeing everything in nature is really a part of your nature, but we just forgot. And the benefit of remembering that is thinking with nature will, will come up with solutions that will actually be helpful for the world we're in right now. So that's where my big idea is. That's where it intersects with the books and getting this message to help people remember that we are a, a clearly a part of the earth, if not earth having a human experience, because mm -hmm. everything we eat, drink and hydrate, right, is the earth. It's all earth. So, when so it, that's it. When it comes to the illustrations you're looking for, how many illustrations are you thinking? Well, let me... Um, I mean, it's eight worlds of wonder. Is this eight illustrations or is it a lot yes, more? Yes, it is. It is eight illustrations. I actually can, <clears throat> I can actually send, it's so messy what I've done, but... <clears throat> So, oh my God, it's such a mess. So, yeah. Um, so I don't even know how you can see this. You're not going to be able to see it. See uh, it. Just hold it close. I can see it. Okay. So this is how it starts, the eight wonders. And then it talks about wherever, when you travel. And then here's the world of air. Like what lives up there? Right. And so wherever you are, there's sky and air. This is very rough. And then mm -hmm. we add in water and then there's water, the world of water. And so then I put the sky and then water It kind of layers it. Mm -hmm. And then from water, it goes to a, a space where what do you see in the water? So I want it to be like this would just be framed out, illustrated, and maybe people put their own petroglyph here. And mm -hmm. then there's land from the so there's sky, there's water. And then land comes in and the land is so the, 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 ver, the, I've pretty much written it. It just needs to be. And then what do you see in the land? So I want this to be like a personal journal. And then now there's sky, water, land, plants, you know, and the plants are everywhere. What do you see in the plants? It's not really a children's book, but it has that yeah. vibe, I guess. And then there's the wildlife now. And the wildlife is unique to each place. What wildlife is, well, maybe you're in France. What do you see? Maybe the wildlife's in the bar. And then the community is all these things working together and how community is built on that. And then think about your own community. And now from community comes culture. We reform up the habitat based on what's in the air, the water, the land, right? The wildlife that determines what kind of community can live there. Like where you are, you're in a desert. Some people have trees, some people don't. So this is just a symbol of culture. We reform things around us, right? Mm -hmm. And then culture, of course, creates heritage. And heritage are all the ways that we rediscover the timeline of how we got here. There's so many clues left behind. See, that's it. That's the whole book. Okay. And I did have someone, I did have someone illustrate it for a presentation I gave. This is what made me want to write the book because I did, this was a slideshow. And um, she did these because it's like, I wanted to show it was a food treks organization. And so she did these, but I don't know. I think, I don't know. I could use these. I mean, see, then it's building out. There's plants. And then she put in the wildlife and then it's layered, you know, and then pretty soon now there's community and then the community becomes heritage. And these are the reasons people travel. And the guy that I presented for, it's the International Food Treks. I did a presentation. He was so blown away by my eight world concepts. And I have received some awards here in, in Tahoe for him. the concept of looking at travel and getting a sense of place around these eight worlds that he flipped out so bad. It made me think, maybe I should call this out and make this a guidebook for the goal of the book is stewardship, of course. That's the goal of everything I do is creating stewardship with the earth. And so... The goal of this is if people thought and connected more to these eight worlds that they that are everywhere you are, and then they realize even at home, I have sky water. I wonder where my water comes from. You know, you just start getting curious 
and about the culture and the heritage and the community you're in, when it calls it out and you see it's all part of a layered cake, like we have a foot and a hand and a head. But when you look at the head, there's so much going on. The hand has so much going on, right? It's like that with the with the world. And so I just think if we call these things out. Um, so I'm torn. I don't really know if this is if this would work or the other one would work, but I'm feels like illustration. I, I like the idea of painting because I don't want it to define a place. And they go, wait a minute, I don't have trees here. Why am I looking at this book? You know, if they're in the desert where you are. Yeah. And yet if they're in Mount Everest, it also, it should fit everywhere. Everywhere has air, right? So mm -hmm. do, do you see, does the book make sense a little bit? Yeah, no, I love it. And it looks like you've got it all done. You just, you just need that illustrator to put it together. I need somebody to fin it to put it together now. I do. I all, I handed it off to somebody, but she's it wasn't the right one. I do. And it's somewhere between this and this. Something is between one of these. Yeah. It it is. I've written it. I'm happy with the writing. It's not too much. It's very just poetic, you know. Mm -hmm. Um I yeah. think this one is ready and it's, you see how it fits in a pocket. Wouldn't it be fun to have it in a hotel room? Because it's just because wherever you are, it just makes you think about the culture came from whatever that land informed. Cause you can't have, you know, you're going to build Adobe and have tortillas where you live, but not where in the deep South, that's where you have golf courses where they don't need sprinkler systems. Right. <laughs> I yeah. remember I remember when I went to Virginia, it was like, what? There's no sprinkler systems? Because, you know, you grew up in California. I've <laughs> yeah. never seen that. It was like, how I, do you, I had the same you... experience going to the East Coast. I was like, wait, how do yeah. you have this huge green yeah. lawn and no yeah, sprinklers? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it, see, so that it, it cracked me up because the, the, the host, the person that I was visiting was like, what do you mean you want to go see lawns? I've never seen a lawn without a sprinkler. <laughs> you know? <laughs> and you don't have fences how do you not have fences <laughs> yeah to divide your lawn just goes to the next person's lawn and there's no sprinkler system <laughs> yeah i was in ohio when i had that experience i remember <laughs> when and where i was when i first had that experience because I, like, <laughs> I asked somebody i was like man it must cost a fortune to take care of the lawn here and they're like what what are you talking about <laughs> I'm like, i know that you know it's true it's like where i live people are always sneaking around to take the pine cones because we have the largest pine cones in the world it's like yeah take them they're they're everywhere yeah like, look at these pine cones i go yeah I, I trip on them every day take them please yeah <laughs> yeah and i remember going to las vegas in the southern desert and i saw a road, a road i went a road runner i thought it was a cartoon character <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> But the weirdest one is when my daughter, who grew up here in Tahoe for most of her conscious life, goes to Riverside for college, and she's out with her friends one night, they're climbing up some mountain, and a coyote goes by, and everybody flips out, and she goes, ah, yeah. And then they're sitting down, and there's a snail, and she's like, what is that? And they're like, what is wrong with you? <laughs> we see a coyote, you don't even care, because, you know, we have coyotes everywhere, but you see a snail, and I've never seen a snail. <laughs> <laughs> We appreciate whatever's weird to us. Exactly. And so that's the point of my book, to look closer at these, exactly, the worlds that, because you may see a snail and that may be mind blowing to you. Yeah. <laughs> I, I don't, so, I mean, there are lots of places to find illustrators. You can go on Upwork. I mean, here's a page. It's like, here are the best 20 children's book illustrators on Upwork, right? Uh, the challenge you face is you got to try people out and figure out somebody who matches your style and is going to, to do it the right way. And you've got price ranges from 25 bucks an hour to $65 an hour. And it takes the right person to catch your vision and get what you want and then turn around and provide it and say, this is what you want, right? And you say, yes, that's it, exactly. And sometimes you go through 10 people before you find that person. So that's really the tricky part. And that's the part that I think makes your timeline hard is if you got lucky and you found the right illustrator, sure, they could whip all this stuff out and have it all done in a month. And then you go get your book printed. 
But if you don't find the right illustrator on the first try, who knows how many you have to go through to find that right one. That's exactly what happened. Like I've already paid this woman in advance. I still have $700 credit with her. And um, I was going to use her on the nature and me book, but um, I mean, I don't know yet. I have a lot of projects. I have a lot of hang tags I need. I mean, I run the nonprofit sustain Tahoe and we're just, mm -hmm. I have a brochure I need illustrate. I need a lot of help. So but this, this one is close. And I think this one does fit my talk. And I agree with you. I, I probably should start closer to home because I really like sitting down with somebody, but I guess when Annalise wasn't going to be the one, I just thought, oh man, where do I go? But maybe there's somebody close by. I mean, I'm in close to Reno. Yeah. I, I guess I'll. Yeah. I mean, Chances are there is somebody close by. I mean, this is how I would go about it. Um, can you see my screen? Is that yeah. clear? Yeah. I mean, I would just go to LinkedIn. You type in Illustrator. You filter by people. Oh, I see. And then you can say locations. Location, Reno. I mean, let's get really okay, specific. Tahoe, sure. Let's, oh, wow. Uh, really? Now, which Tahoe's is the... Tahoe, Tahoe Vista City? is the closest. Tahoe Vista is really close. Okay, let's just go Close, there and see what pops are... up. Okay, we only got one person and it actually says they're in Paraguay, so I'm not sure why it's showing up. But let's okay, try Tahoe the Tahoe City then. Other one. Tahoe City, here. let's try that. Whoa. Okay, so we've got 32 results here for Illustrator. Now again, we don't See, this person's popping up. It says Adobe Illustrator. So no, that might, no, I need an artist. Not... I need Lynn. Lynn looks good. Holy right. shit, look at this. So, this is good. So we'll look at Lynn. Let's look see, at I, let's not see graphic these... designer. I don't think I need a graphic freelance. I need well, some illustrator and designer artist. might be a fit. Let's see. Designer, print production. Mm, probably not. Let's look at some of these others real quick. I have no idea there were so many. His thank you, Josh. You're right. This one is so close. And then I could, it's just a little booklet. It's only um, one, two, Lynn. Okay. Mm -hmm. Now, the thing is, it would really be nice if she were posting her work up here, right? She's obviously not using LinkedIn to its fullest potential. But at least we did find her. Now, this could be really out of date as well, but it gives us a name. So let's, and she doesn't, oh, she's got her website. That's good. So we can go look at her website. All right. So now we can look at her work, right? So you can look at her work. You know, she's close by. Let's just verify that she's actually, yeah, Tahoe City. Tahoe oh, City. Okay. And original. so now... She's doing fine art. Let's see. I'm not. Why seeing. doesn't she have any? Work yeah, she's yet. not taking care of her website as much, but. So she does fine art. She does some really nice art. Maybe I it, like that maybe impressionistic. But... That works. I like that she does realism and impressionist because I'm looking for impressionistic realism, which I guess is impressionistic. Yes, yeah. I want scenery that isn't so locked in that it allows you to be wherever you are and go, oh yeah, land. It's yeah. just land. So know? at least this gives you somebody to talk to, right? Gosh, I mean, there's there's you. a lead. This let's go look at awesome. Newman. Let's go look at uh Bryn here. Not my wife Bryn, but we've got a different Bryn. Let's see. So she's got some good, she seems to love the outdoors. Let's see if she has a website. Yep, she does. Okay, so let's look at paintings. Okay, so she's got a very different no, style. That's very different, but it's actually cool also. That could work, like that one with the mount. I like that. I like this, that it's it's a little more... It, I definitely do the book in color, but that kind of works. She, it's like she gets the idea of how to image somebody's, because I'm trying to bring the word culture to life, you know, so it needs some kind of a iconic abstract to bring culture. Yeah. But um, I mean, look how fast we found two people. Okay. That thank are you. Good artists, wow. Right? This is really, this just came up for me 
when I realized I just got this back on Tuesday and I realized I got to find it. And everybody's saying, just do it yourself, Jackie. But clearly <laughs> you can see this is my work. You know, I'm not, I can't do everything. It's I, I need, I would like to get help. Um, yeah. So yeah, I just don't feel I can actualize this as best. I'm going to meet with both of these women. They're both close. I kind of like this one, actually. I like that style she has. And if if you really want to get brave, you could actually use AI to generate pictures for you. And you might be shocked at how good they are. What? Okay, show me how you do that. David's been really big on that, my friend who runs for me here. Okay. Show me how does that work? Okay, so here's the thing. I'm not very good at this myself, but let's play around a little bit um, and see what we can do. I've got, I used this before. This is probably going to be more useful for showing you what other people are doing. Because the, the thing with AI is it's all about the right prompt. It's all about telling AI the right words to get it to generate what you want it to do. And um, so if I said I wanted to generate the world of water, wow, did it hear me? <laughs> yeah, well, <laughs> it almost seems like it did. Okay, so you have to get into Discord to do this. Yes, I've already got it. Oh, looks like I need an update. What an interesting site this is. This is called Discord. Well, so Discord is an app that allows you to create communities and talk with people. So Midjourney is an AI application, but in order to use Midjourney, you use it within Discord. Discord is kind of like a platform. So think of Discord as like Facebook or it's a platform with people doing lots of different things on it. So, um, okay. I thought Gosh, I Gosh, you just did given me stuff. a crazy idea. If this, yes, my daughter here. is a senior software engineer at Microsoft and she's working on this thing that is probably because Microsoft wants a competitor in this space, right? They want to compete in this space. And it's something where you put in what you want and it creates an image based on it. I haven't played with it because I'm not very savvy on interesting. Okay, so let's see, there's a, uh, okay. So let's just look at some examples of what other people are doing. Okay. RV squad. So here's- That the was all generated by AI? This was generated by AI. Holy shit. I know that's what people say when they see this for the first time is you're looking at this and you're like, wait, like that's a painting that would take an artist a month or two, right? Yeah. To do. And yet this AI just, is doing this. And but, these, are, these are other people. So we're looking at what other people have done. No, I and, understand. But what's a little crazy is AI can only grab ones and zeros from the plethora of ones and zeros that we have fed it, all of us collectively for the last 30 years, right? So yeah. it's really using the artwork of a ton of people. So yeah. now back up a little bit. That is kind of that one, this one right here is sort of like an abstract, realistic kind of a, that would kind of, that feeling, yeah. that look would kind of work for me, kind of watercolored, watermarked. Yeah. Well, and this, this here, like that almost looks like a photo. That's not a photo. That's just AI generated this whole thing. But it pulled from photos <laughs> and yeah. So it's it's been trained. It's looked at lots of different. But I things. can see why artists are flipping out because oh yeah, this is a compilation of their artwork. But it's yeah. done distorted enough that it falls outside of the IP criteria. Yep. So here on the okay, left, so there, there we go. Long, woman with long hair wearing black blouse, hoop earring. I see sitting in an office. That's how specific. Yeah. And so you come in here and you can look at what other people are using as prompts. And then you take their prompt and you modify it and it will give you other stuff. So. Right. So um, I need a background of 
sky that shows the sky from sunrise to moonrise. I yeah. want I want the world of sky to encompass. I tried to do that here. It's very rudimentary. See, I put the stars and the moon. Wait, no, that's not sky. But yeah, I I attempted to right. So at the top I put the stars and the moon. See how bad that is. And I tried to make it like a sunrise and then all the things in the sky weather yeah. systems and birds you know i tried to give it like the language of sky is almost like what is the language of sky it can have mm -hmm. weather wildlife and wonder god yeah. these are insane oh yeah it's... this is scary this is going to put a lot of people out of business it already has but the other that side of is it AI? is what <laughs> the other side of this is that if you're an artist you know what looks good and you you can create the best you can use this as a tool to create even better art good point and fair enough that's right it's augmentation that was the whole idea of putting chips in our head right to augment our intelligence right because it's the it's one thing to be able to put in a prompt and get something out it's another thing to know what to even ask for you're right. And it's C CSI or whatever, CGI, the computer generated images that are running all the movies now. So you're right. That is the movie wants this, but they want that character to fly. And so, and with wings and grow claws. So, yeah. Yeah. And it's, it's the artist. Yeah. It's, this is just another tool. I mean, every tool that has come out, artists have been criticized for using that tool. I mean, remember the Impressionists. When the Impressionists started coming out, everybody said, no, that's not realistic. It's terrible. This is not real art. And Monet and all these other people that. were, all these people like Monet were criticized for their Impressionistic art. And now we look at it as some of the greatest art ever created. And that's the art I actually want. I want that impressionistic art. That's what I'm looking for. I am looking for the impressionistic art because I don't want it to lock in. Wait, is that is that moon drawn right? I just want the impression of that. I really want the feeling of the wonder of sky. Mm -hmm. And then I want people to look at it very briefly. That's why I don't want it to be a big book, not a lot to read. And then I just want them to go, let's go outside. I want to just look at the sky in Paris. I've never been here before. And I never thought that that would be something different than the sky because it is, you know, just like what we're talking about. You go to Iowa, I'm sure you noticed the sounds at night and how sticky and that air is so sticky. Yeah. Now here's, speaking of books, this is an interesting case study right what? here. Here's somebody who worked with a cover designer. So these on the bottom, a human being designed these, but the client, the author, he wasn't happy with these. He's like, he says, I was never satisfied with the look of the characters. So then he came into Mid Journey, and this is what Mid Journey created. And he says, I'm really happy with how it turned out. Whoa, you know what? I so isn't that fascinating? <laughs> that is, yes. I kind of like the bottom one, though. City of Demons, I like the bottom one. But <laughs> otherwise, I like the two top ones. Yep. So that's that's it's really more beef. You give more beef to the it gives more weight. I'm gonna I'm gonna do a screenshot of this and use this for a LinkedIn post because I think uh I think that is a good one. I think yeah. other people are going to be uh interested. Blown away at as, that. God, yeah. I haven't even thought about the cover of the book. I do want a Gosh, oh man. Um, but you're this, right. But again, I, the question is how do you give it the right prompt? How do you say the right stuff to get it to do the right thing? But I, th I think artists are going to pe be the ones who will profit the most from this if they use it. There are artists who will, I mean, there are artists right now who are out there struggling to make 60,000 a year who are going to become millionaires and make a million dollars a year because they're going to use AI and they're going to combine AI with their artistic background. I agree. To I agree. It's things. like what the movies did. It's like the movies using CGI. Yep. Wow. Wait a minute. Sojourning. That's amazing. Yeah. And see, people are using it to create social media graphics. That's probably illegal in that one. <laughs> I 
I think on that one, they were just saying, I went to the Taylor Swift concert and that's all, but. Yeah, I think you're right. Yeah, here's somebody who's doing graphics to put on a car. Holy shit, queer tango. It's, I mean, it's just, it's amazing. And you can just create. There we are. That's kind of more, this is the feel I want. That's the yeah. feel. That's exactly the feel. Gosh, I actually, that could be eight worlds of wonder. Yeah. That could almost be my cover. Yeah, that would be a great cover for it, huh? Now, I don't know, again, I'm so new to this, but I mean, you can come in here, you can find this Vidina, you can message her and say, hey, I have no idea what I'm doing with Mid Journey. Can you help me figure this out? But I love some art that you created. Can you help me figure this out? And I'll pay you yeah. to produce a bunch of stuff. And here are my paintings. Can you come up with stuff that looks like what you did, but matches mine? And he or she might say, you know what? Gosh, I, 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 can, I can do that in one hour. I'll charge you a hundred bucks. And you, you know might what? I just got my whole book illustrated for a hundred bucks. And it's almost amazing. like if I showed her this, where am I? Here we are like this. And she did it like that. Yeah. Right. Because this one isn't bad, but it's too dark and I need it more whimsical and more. I, that is wonder to me. That is wonder. And I like, that's the whole point to get people to wonder more about the natural environment. So they feel connected to it and they want to care and they'll build stewardship. Yeah. Does that plan make sense? Yeah. I do like this one. Okay. Her name's Vendina. So I have to go on this mid journey through discord app. I have to get the discord app, get to mid journey, go find Vendina, And yeah, then so, exactly what you said. So what you're going to want to do is just search for mid journey tutorial. And you might look on YouTube for this. You might just Google it, but you might want to look on YouTube and go through a mid journey tutorial, which will help you get through some of the basics. Otherwise, if you just try to do it. No, I won't. I won't be able to. I'll have to ask David too. It's it's going to be so confusing. But if you look at a tutorial for 10 minutes, it will save you two hours of trying to do stuff on your own. I'm going to just take a picture. This is, I think you found that that's as close to a book cover that I didn't even think of that I wasn't thinking of my book cover yet, but that, that looks like wonder. It's a little more in a Lord of a Rings wonder. I'm trying to just get it to be, but yeah. it's got the feel that I'm, I'm going after the feel, the soft mystical yeah. feel. Yeah. 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 So God, I wonder where she lives. Wouldn't that be crazy if she lived in Tahoe? <laughs> <Probably not. laughs> It's probably in she's India. probably in Russia or Ukraine. Russia. Or something. Russia. Yeah. I would say. So in the world blend showcase. So this one's called In the World. Hashtag in the world. Is that her thing? Uh that's not her thing. That's just a channel. And there are a lot of people in here. So what you're gonna want, if you want to contact her, you need to look for this username here, Vidina underscore zero zero five nine two. Because if nothing else, I'm also going to reach out to those Tahoe City artists uh -huh. and, you know, talk to them about this and the ability to augment images using this to get closer to this feel. Because really, I want I know that the illustrations are going to be critical. And when people open the book, it's like, whoa, let me look a little closer. They're going to be mm -hmm. critical in doing it yeah, and helping people want to participate in being a part of this journey for themselves and then taking it wherever they travel. That's why I want to have the empty pages. They may want to write notes. Yeah. I could get this done by October. You could. Yeah. <laughs> you definitely could. Because it's, it's written now. I've written it. It needs, it's ready. Let's focus on this one then because I'd love to have something done. If, if you want somebody to help, so my wife is primarily an editor, but she's also kind of a project manager. She just helps get stuff done. And so she's working with her clients on printing and cover design. And like, she's not a cover designer, but she's going out and helping them recruit. I would definitely talk to her. If, I will. 
Yeah, if you want somebody to just help with overall project management and getting stuff done, then I do. she can help out with that as well. I would be, I think that's what I need because I'm, uh, this is my first time and I'm pretty good with my big book, although it's so funny how from when I started it to where I am now, I'm going to the root of the problem. The problem is people don't feel connected to nature. So I'm finding that I need a smaller entryway in before I can explain how they need to rework their entire destination to accommodate visitors who won't leave trash. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, so um, yes, yes. So let me see, you put her number, Bryn. Yeah, her, e her email's there in the chat at the very top. Well, I got it. Let see. Yep. Okay, yes, I will reach out to her. Josh, I really appreciate this. You got me really pumped. I'm, I do have this. I did take pictures of it. I do have it in, it's just such a mess, but at least it can be looked at. I mean, I could see what I was going to do is do a cleaner version of this to show someone else, but I mean, you got it. You see what yeah. I'm trying to do. It's yeah. not, it's not terrible. No, I mean, you, it communicates the vision of what you want to do. That's okay. So mm -hmm. I am going to, uh, email her and I can send the pictures I took from this and talk to her and see what she thinks and what she'd want to help project lead this. And also, um, you know, I guess it doesn't matter where the illustrator is as long as they can, as long as they if, can she get gets the, if she gets the vision, you're right. It really doesn't matter. I mean, if I just handed this off, I'm not even that attached to it. It just has to pull people in to make them wonder about each world and see mm -hmm. how they fit together. The other idea I had for the book that I was trying to get the illustrator to do, and it's, I didn't do it very well artistically, but the idea was, did you ever remember Harold the Cran? I know that was before your time. Harold. No, that, that was my, well, I don't know if it was my time, but my mom read that to me when I was a kid. So yes, I okay. definitely Okay, so it. the one thing that's super important for me is that it can, that I had the illustrations try to continue, like you see the start of the bird I noticed then, that you had the line on the first few pages and yeah. And then it comes like over that. and then you see the start of the turtle and there's the turtle going on land from water because yeah. the it's important, as you probably already know, to show people that all these things are connected, like the foot's yeah. connected to the knee bone, the knee bone, you know, just like nature and that we're part of that. That's, that's really great. a piece that's, imp that's why I wanted an illustrator. I can't do that with painting. I need the that Harold Cran to go all the way through. And then the feeling of the illustration is like Jonathan Livingston Siegel, very just in your, like, because if I can release people in those two ways, like it's connected and it's. Yeah. What, what, your... what you really want is you want a single panoramic image that you can chop up into the pages, right? You know, I hadn't, well, except that I want to layer it. So first it's just sky and then it's sky and water and then sky, water, land, sky. So it could be that you take it, you just build the image at the end with the heritage, but heritage and culture have to be two different images because the culture is when the people come together and they put their teepees in their fire pit. And then heritage is when you put a sign on it, right? It's the same teepee with a sign on it. Oh, that's how they did it a thousand years ago. So the culture forms up based on. Gotcha. So it isn't one. It's really, but it ends up, you see it all together. But first it's like sky, water, land. Then there's plant. Then there's wildlife. Then there's community. Then there's culture like that. So it's a build. It's a build. Yeah. I can see how you could still do that with a panorama though, because you could still have part of it where it's the teepees or whatever, and there's actual natives living in them, but then it keeps on going. And there are these teepees over here that actually somebody's putting a fence and a sign around it and other people looking at it, you know, but exactly. it's all connected. You know what, Josh, actually, I'm tracking you here. And I think in a way, I kind of, I feel like that in a way would kind of show the, the connection, the reality of it. I mean, because those natives would be fascinated by the idea that a thousand years later, 200 years later, that people would put their stuff in a museum and come and look at it. It's like, this is just our house. Like to them, it was no big deal. To us, it's a huge deal because it's this vision into an, a different world. 
And if you have that all connected in one panorama and it kind of joins those two where you see like, here are the people actually living in this stuff. And right here are people like turning that into a museum piece. Well, you know what you got me thinking about? You've really done it like Harold the Crayon. If you start and then you're right, you don't see the whole painting because it's way over at the end when they're yeah. at the museum. So, but when you back it up, it's like, oh, that's part of the same painting. I yeah. do see what you're saying. That's brilliant. I like that. I'm open. That would be, that would work because you're right. It is the same thing, but it's just getting more mysterious. Where's it going to go? Where's it going to go? Where's, it, where's the crayon going to go? Oh my God, all these are connected. How would you yeah. do that? But you so could. This, see, this is the trick with AI is you can do this with AI. I don't know exactly what you would have to feed the AI, but you would have to tell it. I want to do a panorama and I want to start with this on the left and then it fades into this and this and they're all connected. And I like, see what you're saying. So it's somebody, like one big long strip and then right. you cut it. Yep. And I don't know how to feed the right prompt into AI to get that, but literally anything you can imagine can be created. It's just there's this gap between the final creation and your idea. And in between is the right prompt. And we just have to figure out what that prompt is. And then it will spit it out immediately and you have it. It's just a matter of figuring out that prompt. And that takes experimentation. That takes somebody going in and trying something out. Oh, no, that's not right. Okay, let's modify this. Let's add this. Let's remove this. And somebody can figure that out. I don't know who it is, but maybe it's this one person. Maybe it's somebody else, but somebody could figure that out. Or you can just hire an artist and they can paint the whole thing. But that takes time and that costs more. <laughs> anyway. Yeah, I, I'm going to storyboard that one big scene. I do see what you're saying. It's almost like a, it's almost like makes it a flip book. <laughs> yeah. Uh, or well, it's a, just it's just what you were saying. I mean, you're taking it from I'm one saying. page to the next and each page is connected. So why That's not it. make that one connective tissue, but you add things as you go along. It's like it's dawn. And so you don't see much, but the sky is really dominant. And then, then oh, there's water there. Oh, there's land. Oh, there's plants. I see. Yeah. All right. I will. Uh, I'm going to play with that. I'm going to call. Wait, did I grab this? Yeah. Let me see. Let me make sure before I. I lose you. So I've got it in my email to call your, there's your wife. Okay. So I just put book project manager. Sure. How hot is it over there today? Oh, right now it's only 102. Oh my God. Okay. So you don't want to know that I have on a vest. <laughs> <laughs> it's, and I don't have air conditioning. It's just that it's, uh, it's cold. What, what is it here today? 69. Oh, wow. That would you be You would nice. freeze. You would freeze here. I'd, I'd be loving it. Well, maybe you guys take a trip out. I still have a two-bedroom <laughs> house around the corner that the owner never came up to that we're babysitting until he ever gets here <laughs> 10 years later. <laughs> um, okay. All right. Thank you, Josh. I'm going to... I don't even know where to start. I guess I'll start with your wife and then... Yeah, she can help you figure a lot of this stuff out make it easier on you. Well, I need to get the pictures off my phone or I could send them from my phone. Yeah. So messy, but it doesn't matter, right? Doesn't matter as long as you can communicate the idea. Right. Okay. All right. I'm going to do that. Thank you. Great. All right. We'll call it good there. We'll and, call it good. Uh, this, this is great. great and session. I'm, uh, I'm definitely going to look at those other two local artists. First, I'm going to talk to your wife. I think you're right. I need a project manager to help me get this to the finish line. This could be ready to go by the end of September, maybe earlier. Perfect. All right. Thank well, you, Josh. I'm glad, I'm glad we got together today, Jackie. Appreciate it. Yeah, really glad. All right. Talk we'll talk later. soon. Bye-bye.